everyone welcome back to sweet yellow house it's time for our weekly video and today we have seven crafts for you so let's get started project one is what i call a picture easel or even a recipe holder um, these are some metal easels that i got from i honestly i don't remember i think i got them from um um, a market that was throwing out some of their like advertising signs and stuff like that so these have like an acrylic uh, cover over each side so I start out by removing those and then I'm gonna use some goo gone and get rid of all of that extra like gunk that's on there um, and then I'm gonna take these outside and I'm going to spray them with the bare matte black spray paint and let those dry once that's dry, bring them inside and I'm going to use the ladies in waiting one of the um, pages from that, the um, transfers from IOD. And here I'm just actually cutting out, um, I'm trying to figure out what elements I'm going to use because I want to cut some to use on the other side as well. So one side is going to be completely decorated and the other side is just going to have some accents on it. So I'm cutting off uh, some elements to kind of spread that around and then just making sure that it fits on the, um, the, the side properly without being, you know, like going off the side. I don't want to waste a lot of it. Um, so that's why I'm trying to strategically uh, cut it up. So once I have those transferred, I'm going to use a big top and I'm going to just go over it with that to seal that transfer in. Once the big top is actually dry, I then take it outside and I'm going to spray this with a matte clear coat. The reason that I'm using the matte clear coat over the DIY um, big top is because I want it to bring that matte uh, look back completely. And that was an easy craft but with a big impact and that's how that looks. I am actually taking my pictures inside so it may look my photos may look a little bit different it's because it's a hundred and five billion here and it's too hot for me to be outside trying to take photos so project two is a faux bronze candlestick and I actually have these two pieces this I thrifted and this actually had at one point like a bowl on top of it and I took it apart. The bowl I think I used for something else so I'm left here with the base. So I'm just going to start off by removing anything that looks a little damaged just, just to see if I can kind of fix it and clean it up some. Um, the bottom of that at some point got wet and it kind of swelled so I'm going to try to take some of those layers off so it'll fit back in there without um you know kind of looking swole up and it doesn't sit evenly so i'm gonna use a cork to kind of um seal the top of that because it's big wide open and uh, uh i wanted to put something in there that will kind of like seal that opening up so a cork did the job um i just cut it into place and then i'm gonna use some of the um gorilla clear glue permanent glue and just put that around and then stick the cork in there and uh, kind of press it down tightly once I have the cork in there I just kind of use my finger to kind of pull that that glue over the edge of that cork to kind of make sure it's all sealed in and and um, you know sealed up so it doesn't have any gaps there then i'm going to take that outside and again with the bare matte um, black paint i'm going to paint that and let it dry once that's dry i bring it in and i'm using my dixie bell bronze uh, patina paint and i'm going to do a base coat of that on <clears throat> excuse me on this uh candle stick or bottom of this holder here you'll notice that it'll beat up it'll kind of beat up when you first put it on but if you just kind of keep smoothing it out it'll then eventually stick to that uh, a lot of people have said that but 
Um, I notice that if I just keep going over it, it'll eventually just make up, you know, a solid coat. So I let the first coat dry and then I start with the second coat. And if you've ever used this and you know you when you put the second coat on, you use the patina spray wet. So on this one, I actually decided that I was going to use this Modern Masters uh, patina spray and um, I just wanted to see if this would work with the Dixie Bell and it actually does so I put some of that in a spray bottle a little spray bottle and I'm gonna apply my second coat and then use that spray bottle to spray starting from the top I'm gonna spray it uh, pretty heavily and that's because I want it to then drip downwards to the bottom and puddle at the bottom so it looks kind of natural like it's been you know sitting out and over time and um, has kind of gone through that patina so here I'm showing you that it, this is like about a 15 minute time and of course I sped it up um, just to kind of show you how it transitions from um, nothing into actually, you know, uh, patina, the patina look that it gets there. And then once that's kind of gone, I go and I just touch up some other areas. The Modern Master um, patina, they actually have their own paint and everything too, but uh, I noticed that the patina um a spray or liquid uh you get a little bit more for your money than the dixie bell um so i just i at one point had i had bought it just to see if it would work and obviously it does and um so i think that the modern masters uh paint like line in this patina line there's a couple there's like a couple of more steps that um, you have to take with this but this worked out for me I simply use the Dixie Bell and then use the um, the modern master spray so then I went in once that was all dry and glued the bottom back in with the uh, with my um, gorilla glue uh, glue gun and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue that glass um, top on there i i think this was from like an old lamp or a chandelier or something like that i'm not quite sure but it looked like at one point it was like on a on a light fixture of some sort so i'm using my finger just to kind of apply that glue because i don't want it dripping all over the place so i'm just kind of using it to be a little bit neater once i get it on there and get it pressed down um and then i'm gonna go and take the glue and then uh go around the inside of that to just secure it really well this little uh can candle holder uh, you can use it really for anything if you wanted to use it for a vase because that glue kind of sealed everything You could or you know, you could put a floating candle in there there. You just saw me put um, You know a little bird with some greenery in there some flowers, so So project three are these uh, canisters French canisters and uh, I got these off of Facebook marketplace and I like the color of the tops but for what I wanted to do uh, do with them I needed to change that so I just took the tops I took them outside using my bare black flat spray paint I spray painted those and then I coated them with the clear matte uh, uh, clear coat uh, to just to seal that all that in uh, I let those dry and while those were drying I took my IOD transfer pots um, transfers in the uh, traditional pots um, packet and I just picked out three and applied those to the bottom parts of the canisters. These are like a tin so um, I didn't do anything to the bottom except like clean them up and uh, so the transfers stuck to those uh, really well not a whole lot to these uh to do but um they came out so cute i was just really pleased with those and these you can use for actual if you wanted to use them for canisters or you could actually take the top off and you know use them for a uh, kind of a, a floral arrangement or anything like that so i thought that they came out uh, really 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 precious so Black and white is really not my thing, but 
these are really cute um, in case you were wondering these uh, some of these items will actually be on my website so go over there and check it out um, project 4 is what I'm calling a wooden fishbowl and I got this at the Goodwill I believe and so I'm just going to start off by cleaning it up, taking the tags off, making sure all the dust is gone. Um, I'm going to grab my millet transfer packet and I am going to just try to decide what I want and obviously I went for the page that has all the fishes. And instead of applying this in one fell swoop because I didn't want really uh, the fishes to kind of be cut off over the edge, I decided that I was going to go ahead and cut those apart and apply them individually. Um, this bowl has like what they call a live edge and um, so I didn't really want any of the transfers getting on that on that edge. So. Here I'm just applying those and I just go through and fit them in there uh, where I think um, they look good and um, and I just apply those till the whole uh, in, inside part of that bowl is, is uh, covered. Uh, once I have that all covered, I'm just going to do a top coat of the big top um, just to seal those in. Um, just that way if anybody puts stuff in there, they're not going to scratch those transfers off, uh, you know, accidentally. So I just took that all the way over to the top edge and just covered the whole thing. This is a cute, simple project, but it's nice for a nice gift for someone that loves fishing or someone has a lake house or something like that. They can, you know, put river rocks or seashells or something like that in it. So project five is what I'm calling a art caddy. I actually have uh, my nephew that comes over and he loves to draw. And um, so we're always like gathering uh craft you know like the markers and the and the crayons and all around the house so i thought this little caddy would be really great to just kind of gather everything together so i started off by just cleaning it and removing the handle and i'm just going to cover it in these little bugs from the millet um transfer booklet and again i painted that black with some acrylic just regular acrylic paint um, and I only did the bottom part um, on only on the outside I didn't paint the handle and I didn't paint the inside of the little caddy so and then I'm just gonna add those little bug transfers one at a time until I have everything uh, on the outside covered uh, the way that you know I think looks good Once I have everything covered there, um, I then apply the handle back on and um, I should have waited to do that until I covered it with the big top uh, clear coat, um, but I don't know what I was thinking, but I put the handle back on and then um, I got the big top and applied a coat over the top of this, a couple of coats. Um, remember, this is going to be for a little boy that is... Uh, six and uh, he's probably going to be a little rough on it so I thought an extra coat of um, protection would be good for that. I think little projects like this for you know your kids or your nieces or your nephews uh, makes them feel special and they, it makes them feel like they have a little kind of special little gift that's just theirs when you know they come to your house and then you know they just they love it they love that they always have something waiting for them there at your house and something for them to look forward to so and that's how that turned out and I just filled it with markers and crayons and a little uh, sketchbook project six is a vintage seed packet sign and I got this 
old it's like tin and uh, it has a picture on the inside of that I'm not I'm not exactly sure I know the outside is tin but I'm not sure what the picture part of it is so I just cleaned it up and then I decided that I was going to use marquee uh, this red marquee color from the DIY paint and at first I thought that I was just going to paint the inside with it and then as I'm painting of course you know as as we do we start start a project and then it kind of evolves from there as you're painting other things are going through your mind about what else you could do with it and so i just then at that point decided that i was going to go ahead and just paint the whole thing i'm not being very careful here i did do a solid coat uh, made sure that that was pretty solid on the inside of that um, but the outer portion of that I was very kind of has haphazard with that and so um, I just let some of that rustic part shine through you know like come through I did paint the inside of that with the big top just to give it a clear coat and then I let that dry real well and then I am going in with the seed catalog transfer from IOD and I picked one of those out and I'm going to apply that. I will always try to put a clear coat before I can before I put a transfer down mainly because it never works out for me if I don't do that. I always end up pulling up the paint. Um, and I don't know if it's because I tend to be a little bit heavier handed when I paint and so I'm not exactly sure why but I just tend to um, put a clear coat down before I transfer because it it works out better for me if you're working with something that has a clear coat built in then you know you don't have to do that but, but for DIY paint that um, is you know re kind of reactivated and and all of that uh, I just don't have a good luck with that so I then decide because I have cut off uh, some pieces of that so I'm just kind of arranging all those in a different way so it all fits and I transfer those down layering that over top and it, it uh, lays down really well um, I then decide that I'm going to wet distress the outer portion of that and highlight some of those uh, details around on the corners and on the top and um, so I'm just taking it with water and a paper towel and distressing that and bringing out some of that like rustic uh, um, discoloration uh, that was on it before and letting that kind of come through. I'm sorry if you could hear my dog she's right underneath me and she's snoring like a cow <laughs> so I decided that I was I wasn't gonna clear coat around the outside over over it uh, I was gonna just do like a, a wax because I kind of I wanted it to look you know rustic and old and I just felt like putting a coat of like DIY over the whole thing would just kind of make it shinier than I wanted so I went ahead and went in with some uh, clear wax and just went over everything with it and here I have a like a piece of t-shirt and I'm just kind of burnishing that in I like the way that this came out it's very rustic um, and you can see some of that come through I've seen that you know uh, rust and tin and kind of like really rough type of uh, aesthetics is coming back in or coming really in and uh, so I was just kind of going for that look. So project seven is a magnolia wall hanging. I picked up this wall hanging from um, Facebook marketplace. So I just started out by cleaning all the dust and stuff off of that. And I'm working with Amy Howard's Crack Patina. This is gonna be my first coat. I know this is weird because a lot of times, you know, our, our first coat is always paint, but I want some of that gold to shine through. Um, so I'm putting the Crack Patina on there first and I'm letting that dry. Once that's dry, 
I grabbed the Rustoleum, and this is the oh, what is it called? Chiffon cream, and I'm going over the top of that cracked patina. Um, I'm not being very careful. I'm going for about 85% coverage, but I'm letting some of that gold shine through. And also it's coming through because it's cracking and kind of, you know, cracking and, and letting that come through. So once that paint is dry, I go back in with my crack patina and I'm gonna do a full coat of that over the whole thing and let that dry as well. I don't understand why this uh, Amy Howard's line does not get as much play uh, with other crafters. The, her line, uh, all of her products are great. So you might want to give them a try. So once that paint is dry, I'm going in and, and I'm sorry, not paint, the cracked patina. Once the cracked patina is dry, I'm going in with gray skies from the Cottage Core Line DIY paint. And I'm going to lighten that with some um, vintage linen just to make that gray a little bit lighter. It's just a little bit too dark for me. So um, I'm mixing the vintage linen with the gray skies. And since the gray skies has that a uh, built-in uh, top coat. Um, it's gonna do exactly what I needed to do um, to activate with the uh, crack patina. So once I get that all mixed around, um, I then just start applying that over the wall um, decor. And I'm just doing the same thing that I did with the uh, the paint before is that I am I'm giving it like an 85 90% coverage but I'm just letting some of that white come through also with the um, with the cracking it's gonna shine through now this technique is where I'm taking my hand once that paint gets tacky that the gray paint there I'm taking my finger and I'm using that to kind of remove that paint when you have that cracked patina underneath, it actually allows you to kind of uh, pick, it, pick it up with your finger or anything. And it gives it that natural kind of cracking, um, a lifting um, type of look, as you can see here. And it goes all the way through. So once I have that where I want it, I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to get a little bit of vintage linen and I'm going to dry brush the top of this just to lighten that gray a little bit more and also to give it a little bit more texture. So here I'm just kind of going, I'm trying to stay like very horizontal and vertical. I'm, I'm really not like kind of swooping around in like any kind of round type of motions. I'm really trying to make my brush go back and forth and up and down as far as like top to bottom, side to side and um, kind of sweeping motions. And I'm just dry brushing that so I'm it's a really light, heavy, light uh, handed type of uh, technique. Once that's dry, I'm grabbing the um, sizing from the Amy Howard line and I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm going around the areas of that. Um, I'm kind of staying within that center part um, and just using you know my brush to hit the tips of that. I'm using the Amy Howard gilding uh, sheets as well and I just at this point put one sheet down and then I'm gonna use that one sheet and just grab pieces off that and apply it to the areas uh, where I want to put put that. Mm -hmm. 
this is not very you know a difficult i think the most difficult part is because when that sizing dries it dries clear so it's a little bit hard to see and uh, at some points i will take my finger and kind of feel around where i feel like a little you know sticky area and then that's why i know the sizing is and then i'll go back and apply the um the the gilding uh to that area so i just make my way my way around you can see i'm feeling with my finger there to see if i feel any areas that are sticky that i need to apply some of that gilding and um and just kind of smooth it out and then here i'm just going back and i'm just adding some touches in areas that i feel like need a little bit more of that gold gilding and I just use my brush to kind of, you know, smooth that down. Now this is called the Fluffy by OPI and it's actually a nail um, tool and it uh, has almost like a velvety uh, part on there and I'm using that to really burnish that gold down and it kind of makes it have a little bit more shine and gets it really burnished really well. So. Once I have all that done, I'm going in with my Jolie Finishing Wax, Clear Wax, and I'm just going to do a coat over the whole uh, area. I use the cardboard to kind of wipe the excess off and then I could always go back and pick it up. Um, I just uh, try not to, I guess, have my brush overloaded and then I have big clumps of wax everywhere. Now I'm gra grabbing the bare antiquing wax and uh, I'm just going to go around those crevices and do a little bit of antiquing. And again, I'm being very inten intentional with this. I'm not just going over the whole thing and adding antiquing wax everywhere. I'm just going into those crevices. So now I'm grabbing my um, cotton uh, fabric, t-shirt fabric, and I'm just burnishing everything down, wiping any excess wax off, and I'm actually going in, making sure that I'm going over those gold parts and wiping the wax off that so I get that shine uh, back from the gilding. So, and that's how that turned out. I thought it looked really pretty and authentic with those chips and everything else. Um, I just thought the texture on that is came out so beautiful so thanks for watching and spending your time with me i really do appreciate it if you haven't subscribed please do it helps me out so much and just give me a comment let me know what you think about our projects and if you haven't gone over to our website to check anything out over there please do there's so much information and you can find some of these projects available over there for sale so and we will see you next time